Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech, I'm Josh. In this build, we're gonna be showing you how to build the speed wing of our FT-10. Now the speed wing is a swept back, aileron controlled wing that's gonna give you smooth control and also much faster flight characteristics. Let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. So the first thing that we're gonna be doing with our swept back speed wing is we're gonna go through all the different parts that we have. We have our main wings, we have our spars, we have our control horns, we have our servos that have already been pre-centered and the arms that you're gonna to wanna to use are very specific. Make sure you match those to what we have here. If you don't know how to center your servos or you haven't done that before, we have a really great video that will be linked down below to show you exactly how to do so. Along with that, this wing is gonna have a little bit of dihedral. We're gonna be using the dihedral gauge that's marked with S. This is the same dihedral gauge that we use for our sport wing. So think sport wing, speed wing, swept wing, S. So our first step on the wings is we're going to do a double bevel on the leading edge and a single bevel on the back part of the aileron. Now if you've never done a bevel cut before, we have a really great video. I'm also going to walk you through how to do it with a razor blade right now. Now we can fold over our leading edge 180 degrees. If you're using our utility knife that comes with our Crafty Kit version 2, go ahead and push it to the first detent. This gives you a really easy way to get the proper angle for the knife. Now that we have that, we're going to cut down just above the paper about 45 degrees. I'll flip it over on the other side, same process. Don't worry if at any time you accidentally cut through the paper, we can easily fix that with a piece of tape. The important thing is, is that we make sure that the leading edge can go at least 45 degrees over towards the foam. If you need to open that up a little bit more, you can cut a little bit more, or you can even take like the edge of a marker and crush down that foam. Let's go ahead and do our single bevel, and the single bevel is going to be on the side of our aileron. So again, we're going to take our utility knife, we're going to start it just on the side of the paper here. Whenever we get to the edge here, an easy way to do this is just a little sawing motion, or we can even flip it 180 degrees and come back the other way. Whenever you're cutting a bevel for the control surface, make sure they have no resistance as you move it down against the fold. If you do feel a lot of resistance, inspect where your bevel cut comes down right to where it meets the paper. You can always come back with a piece of sandpaper or your razor blade and shave a little bit more off so you have no resistance in your control. Let's go ahead and do the exact same process now on the other side. Just like before, fold over the leading edge 180 degrees. We'll adjust our razor blade there. folds over pretty good. Just a big marker, flatten it out a little bit more. That's great. Now on the back aileron, we're gonna focus our bevel cut on the aileron side only. And just to get this inside corner, I'm just gonna kinda come back a little bit of a saw motion and we'll check to make sure we have no resistance and that's fantastic. Now that we have all of our bevel cuts done, our next step is to install our spars. Our spars are going to have a unique angle here that's going to match up with the center and the outer tip of the wing and also on this back edge. So make sure that you line these up on the back trailing edge of the bottom surface and also on the edges there. Once you're happy with that, flip that over 180 degrees. We'll apply a bead of glue on the very bottom. We'll flip that right back over. Again, lining up with the back trailing edge of the bottom surface of the wing and also the sides. All right, while that's drying, we'll go ahead and do the other side here. Again, we're making sure that we have everything lined up properly. You know, can go one way or the other. That looks really good. We'll apply a bead of glue on the very bottom. Flip that right back over. Again, lining it up with the back trailing edge of the bottom surface of the wing. 
and also the sides. And we'll let that dry. Now that we have our spars down, let's go ahead and work on making the airfoil. To make the airfoil, we're just simply going to take the tip of a ballpoint pen or a screwdriver and we're going to drag the tip of that pen right down through the top surface of the two score cuts right over where the spars are going to go. This is just going to give us a nice easy way to bend and tell the foam exactly where we want it to bend without wrinkling it. Just going to take my hands, just kind of put a gentle crease there. And now as I fold this over, you're going to see that the wing isn't fighting me and it's taking that form very nicely. If it resists you at all, you may need to go back just a little bit more, go a little bit deeper, and you'll notice that that bend will come even easier. That looks great. To lock in the bend, we're going to put a thin ribbon of glue right down on both score cuts. We're going to fold it over again. And we're just going to go ahead and go down for a few seconds and then back up and then down for a few seconds and then back up. What we're doing is we're allowing the wing to take its shape, but we're not gluing it down to the spar just yet. There we go. You can see that we have our airfoil locked in very nicely. Let's go ahead and finish it off by a bead of glue right on the top of the spar and then right down the center. back over against the table. This time I'm going to put all my attention right over the top of the spar and just use the tips of my fingers to make sure that the trailing edge just touches the table. Again, I'm not pushing on the hinge line, I'm just holding the trailing edge down. Alright, a minute's passed. You can see when I lift this up, the wing doesn't unfold, which is great. Let's go ahead and do the exact same process now on the other side. Just like before, take the tip of a ballpoint pen or a screwdriver, just pushing down through that top layer of paper. Establish a crease there. Next crease, and then we'll bring it over. Once we're happy with the shape of our wing, we're going to lock that down with a thin bead of glue on both score cuts. Down to the table. One, two, three, four, five, lift. One, two, three, four, five, lift. Perfect. And now that we have the shape of our wing, we have plenty of glue in our hot glue gun. We're going to put a bead of glue right down the spar. And right down the middle of the leading edge. Back to the table again. Now the flats of my hands are focusing completely on the spar, while the tips of my fingers are just making sure that the trailing edge is touching the table without it being deflected unnaturally. All right, we're gonna give this a good minute to dry and then we'll join the wings. Now, just like our sport wing, we're gonna be establishing a little bit of dihedral using this gauge here. To make these wings bend a little bit easier into each other, I'm just gonna pick one of our sides and kind of hold it in the angle and just kind of rock it back and forth. And that's just gonna let the paper kind of crush in just a little bit at an angle. So then when we put these two together, we get a very nice clean joint. Once we've done that, we're gonna create a hinge with a piece of tape. Do a quick test fit with our dihedral gauge attached to the wing tip. That looks fantastic. Now that we have our dihedral gauge on, we can open this up kind of like a book. We're going to focus a nice healthy bead of glue on one side, the spars, and the bottom and the top of the wing. Now when we open this up, we're going to join the wings one last time making sure that the trailing edge and the leading edge are nice and flush with each other. If you want to add a little bit of strength, you can always come back with an extra small bead of glue right over the top. And then smear it. We're going to give this a minute to dry and make sure everything is fully dry before we move it. If at any point you move it and you notice that the wing is not secure, go back and hold it again until it's dry. And you'll notice now after a minute, I removed my hand, nothing's moving. Before we put our center reinforcement on, let's put a little barbecue skewer on both sides of this, and that's gonna help protect the trailing edge of the wing against some rubber bands. So I'm just gonna mark this with my hand, crack it, and we'll 
glue one in place. Now this wing works for both the tractor and the pusher configuration. Just like the other wings, if you're gonna be using the pusher configuration, you're gonna to need to cut along these dotted lines, including these reinforcements on the back of the wing, uh, and cut through that, and that'll allow the wing to slide back around the power pot. Now that our trail and edge reinforcement's all done, our last step is to reinforce the top surface of the wing with a piece of two inch tape. Kind of like wrapping a gift here. We'll just put a little cut there, pull that in same process on the back. Just cut that down the middle. One goes this way and one goes that way. Our main wing is now built. Our next step is to install the servos and the control horns and push rods so we can control our ailerons. Now because of the nature of the swept back wing you're going to notice there's not a whole lot of natural ways to hold this. The easiest way to keep things nice and neutral and work on it is to let the back half of the wing hang off the workbench here. So I'm going to go ahead and work with the wing in the way that you see right here. First thing we're going to do is install our control horns. Just like everything else, we're going to do a quick test fit, making sure that the whole of the control horn is directly over our hinge line. And that looks good. Once we've done our fit, we'll lock that in. There we go. I can show you here. You'll see there's the hole, there's the hinge line, and they line up perfectly. Let's go ahead and do that on the other side too while we're waiting. Quick test fit, right over the score cut. That looks great. Once we've done our fit, we'll lock that in. Got a little bit of excess to squeeze down towards the hinge line. We don't want that. There we go. And we'll let that dry. Now that our control horns are drying, we can put this aside. Let's put our attention towards the push rods. With our push rods, first we're gonna start off with the Z-Bend. If you don't already have one, simply by bending 90 degrees, grabbing it down an eighth of an inch, and then rotating. Next, we're gonna measure two and a quarter inches, and we're gonna put a mark. Now that we have that mark, we're gonna make sure that our Z-Bend is pointing vertical and we're going to grab it just on the inside of that mark, like you see here. Now we can bend it vertical 90 degrees. Before I go ahead and go any further, I'm going to make sure that this is still flat against the table and the wire is. That's going to make sure that both Z-bends are on the same plane. Now we'll grab this roughly an eighth of an inch, bend it 90 degrees to the right or left, doesn't matter, and then we'll cut it. Now that we have our Z-Bend made, let's go ahead and grab it. We'll slowly rotate 90 degrees, and then we'll lay it back on the table to make sure everything's nice and flat. Let's go ahead and do that process one more time for the other side of the wing. Make our first Z-Bend. Measure two and a quarter inches. Grab the wire, again, making sure that the wire is vertical, and we're gonna bend it 90 degrees on that same plane. Test it on the table. If for any reason it's a little bent, all you simply need to do is just grab it, give it a little bit of a twist, and it'll be nice and flat. Last step is to grip it about an eighth of an inch from the bend and bend it 90 degrees one more time, and then cut off the excess. Now we can grip that Z-Bend, which is a modified Z-Bend currently, rotate it 90 degrees, and both of our push rods are done. <laughs> now, the way that we're gonna be mounting our servos is gonna be very specific, and the goal is, is that if you hook this up to the FTOR5, we like you to not have to do any servo reversing. It is incredibly easy to change your servo directions on the FT Aura 5, but the simpler we can make it, the better. So for that reason, we're gonna be mounting the servo arms with them pointing towards the center of the wing. And so when you look at this, this is what you're gonna to wanna to see. There's a the servo arm, there's the center of the wing. Now that we've established that, I'm gonna install the first push rod into our control horn. 
And this is gonna be what moves the controls up and down. And then you're gonna notice that we have three holes on our control horn. Different servos may have different holes, but the one that we're gonna be going for is gonna be the one in the middle. The further out you go on your servo arm, the more throw you have, the closer in, the less throw you have. The middle is the perfect amount of deflection that we need. Now that we know which side is gonna be meeting down against the wing surface, we'll pull off this little sticker here, if your servo has a sticker. And then we can use a little piece of sandpaper or even a razor blade and rough up the surface. If at any point that your servos get moved in this process and they're no longer centered, make sure you recenter them before going on to your next step. If you glue your servos on while the arm is crooked and then you power on your transmitter later, you're gonna have to go ahead and either trim that out or adjust it by removing your servo and re-gluing it. Our final step in this installation is with our two fingers, we're gonna hold the aileron nice and neutral and then we're gonna place some glue on the back edge and then press it down against the wing wherever it lies. glue, I'm going to pinch this, and notice that I'm keeping this 90 degrees from my hinge line that's going to make the least amount of uh, resistance, and then when I release this now, everything is nice and flush. You could always choose to put linkage stoppers, but in my opinion, I think it's far simpler to do it this way, and simply let the servo land wherever it is to keep everything nice and neutral. Let's do the exact same process on the other side. Attach our control horn. And we'll just go ahead and remove that sticker now and make it a little bit easier for us. Get the oils off of there. And rough it up. Again on the servo arm, it's gonna be the middle hole for the servo arm. And with our two fingers, we're gonna hold that nice and neutral. Once we're happy with that, we'll glue it down. Our last step is we're just gonna stretch out the lead of our servo and we're gonna tape it right against the back end of our spar. Make sure you give yourself at least an inch of lead so it's easy to connect the wing to the fuselage. And the other side. At this point, the speed wing for FT Tenant is now done. We're ready to move on to our next project in the build of the FT Tenant. Look forward to building with you again.